Hi everyone, I'm a second author from the Shandong University. This work is co-authored by Zhen Zhen, Jian, and Li. We propose a new approach to reliable, takeable block ciphers. Uh, it means first we cut a block cipher into three chunks, and then we add a trick twice between these chunks. Uh, see this example. If we have a block cipher with n1 plus n2 plus n3 runs, uh, as in this picture, we will cut it into three chunks with n1 runs, n2 runs, and n3 runs. So by this, here we have two gaps. And then we exhaust the tweak between the two, the three chunks into the two gaps. Uh, no, uh, there is no tweak schedule function here. We just exhaust the original tweak so it will be efficient. Uh, let's see this picture. The method can be viewed as a as an operation mode with three permutations: pi one, pi two, and pi three. We call this mode tweak and tweak because uh, it can be seen as we tweak the computation twice: tweak and then tweak. The mode is as we prove beyond both the CQ up to two to two n divided by three queries. This might be the SPRT mode with the most efficient tweaking method because uh, there is no tweak schedule function that we mentioned before. Based on AES, we propose an instance named the TNT AES. See this picture. In this instance, uh, the three permutations are instantiated by six wrong AES function, wrong function. Its performance as we evaluate is among the best both hardware and software. And, they, and they also at the same time they enjoy some probable support. Let's see the details. My talk will follow this. Let's first recall the notion of the typical box. So, a typical box is a box with a So, it has two The first input is the second input is the tweak, the additional input. And then the third input is the front text x and it is an output of y. By using lambda different tweaks, we will have lambda different block ciphers for such a from such a single clickable block cipher. So this is the, this is the motivation of this uh, the function of the clickable block cipher. Uh, about the motivation of the clickable block cipher, it is from some the need of some modes of communication. Because some modes want to have multiple block cipher instances. Uh, for example, let's see this figure. This picture is a famous ECB encryption mode, and we know it is bad, it is insecure because it preserves the plain text pattern. For example, uh, in this three, uh, in this L chunk, L message blocks, if M1 equals M2, then the ciphertext block C1 equals the ciphertext block C2, and uh, we could uh, notice this relation from the ciphertext. But if the L different message blocks are encrypted by L different block ciphers E1, E2, uh, to EL, rather than a single block cipher E, then it will be secure because we can, even if M1 equals M2, uh, we cannot expect C1 equals C2 because they are encrypted by two different block ciphers. But of course, we cannot have so many ciphers in practice to instantiate such a mode. But if we have a trickable block cipher, we can use all different tricks inputs. Uh, trick one, trick value one, trick value two, and the trick value L as a trick input to the trickable block cipher to get all different block ciphers as we mentioned. So we could instantiate such a mode, such a ECB mode. Uh, actually, this ECB mode variant could be is the core of the AE mode theta CB3 or OCB. AE authenticated encryption is not our topic, so we won't talk too much about this. We will just check the references. Uh, we now recall the notion birthday and beyond birthday security. When we are using block ciphers or takeable block ciphers with n bit block size, Birthday bound security means the crypto system is secure up to 2 to n divided by 2 queries or 2 to n divided by 2 complexities. Typically, this means 
the mode, uh, maybe the clickable bomb cipher mode, or the encryption mode, or something else, some other equivalent system mode, is secure when the number of processed data blocks is less than two to n divided by two. This is not so. Um, this is not a huge number. When we are using all the block ciphers with sixty-four bit blocks, uh, for example, triple dash or something like this. Uh, the mode can only process less than two to thirty-two blocks, and this is actually practically vulner practically vulnerable. See this reference. Even if uh, when we are using AES uh, with one hundred and twenty-eight bit block uh, versus bound security means less data can be securely processed, and a more frequent key update is needed. For the detailed discussion, we refer to the CCS best paper for reference. No clickable blocks are necessary, and the beyond both and bound uh, is desirable. So how can, how can we have clickable blocks ciphers? The first method is the modular approach. We will use modes, uh, modes of block ciphers to turn classical block ciphers into clickable block ciphers. This method is good because we have better understanding of its security by a mathematical reduction. The shortage is that uh, the result is usually less efficient than well-designed algorithms. Actually, this claim, the, such, such claims apply to not only clickable block ciphers but also AES and other crypto systems. It is general. So for this approach, we already have these modes. For birthday security, we have LRW1, LRW2, XEX, and something others. And for beyond birthday secure modes, we have cascaded LRW2 and some others. Uh, we will see them later. Here, we don't spend so much time on this page. Another method to have clickable block ciphers is just to design a block cipher with a ticket in code. This is what we call a dedicated approach. For this, we have some early designs such as Mercy and something else. And later, it is later the important development, the TT framework in Asia Group 14. See this picture of a TT framework. In brief, this framework views the tweak and the key as of equal role in the uh, computation and calls them tweak key. This tweak key, tk, is scheduled by some function into round keys. The, uh, the schedule function, uh, we call the schedule function as tweak key schedule function. And the tweak key will be derived as uh, several sub tweak keys, and the sub tweak keys are then used as round keys in key alternating ciphers. Or maybe you could use them as round keys in fast ciphers or something else, de depending on the context. So if well designed, this can be very efficient, uh, giving a secure tweakable block cipher or a secure block cipher in the related key setting. We will refer to the we refer to the reference for the details. So on on the downside, security is only guaranteed by comprehensive cryptanalytic results. Uh, there is no pro there is no reliable probable result. So the tricky framework uh, give, gives rise to a number of instances such as Deoxys BC, Skinny, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, let's have a more glance on this tricky framework. Uh, since the tweak would affect the execution affect the computation of the tweak key schedule function. If we retweak or if we change the tweak, the tweak key schedule function will be exact again. So retweaking costs some. Maybe not so much. Uh, maybe the tweak key schedule function is efficient, but uh, still retweaking costs some. And we ask if we could uh, have even simpler retweaking method. This was one of the main motivations of this work. So from now on, we talk about our contributions. As we mentioned before, our main contribution is a new approach to dedicated clickable block ciphers. See this figure again. In the first step, we the iterative block cipher into three chunks. And in the second step, we add the tweak twice between the chunks. 
So we have very efficient tweaking method without any tweak, uh, tweak, tweak schedule function. So about the gain of this method, first of all, this seems the most efficient tweaking method because simply because we have no tweak schedule function. So unsurprisingly, our instance algorithm achieves the best performance in the retweaking scenario. And the set, uh, we remark, uh, in many, actually retweaking is necessary in many modes, many scenarios. Uh, and second, our method is partly supported by a security reduction. So its security might be more reliable than totally dedicated block ciphers. Actually, this is a prove than poor approach from EuroCrypt 15. We could view the method as uh, we prove security for the TNT mode, and then we instantiate the mode with scale down, the scaled down primitive or round reduced block ciphers. So it enjoys uh, partial security, partial probable security supports, and also it is, it is efficient. Consider the construction, uh, I mean the third one again. We could idealize the three chunks as three independent permutations, pi 1, pi 2, and pi 3. By this, we have an uh, idealized TNT modes of operation. This new mode can be viewed as cascading LRW1 for this, let's recall the, the context. LRW1 is given in the initial tweakable block cipher paper. It just exhausts uh, the tweak between two permutations, pi1 and pi2. Now, if we consider its cascade, we cascade two such uh, constructions, and then the two middle permutations, pi2 and pi1 pro, can be merged as a single one, pi2. So by this, we have TNT. So the TNT is actually a cascading RW1 mode. So for the security, <coughs> the LRW1 tweakable block cipher mode is only CPA secure up to birthday bound to, to n divided by two queries. And both the birthday bound and the CPA security are tight and cannot be improved. Uh, I mean, LRW1 is not CCSQ. So the question is, is the TNT or cascaded LRW1 secure in the CCA setting and uh, up to the beyond the birthday security bounds? As a main contribution, we show it is the case. Uh, TNT or cascaded LRW1 is beyond the birthday secure. Let's first record the security goal. Uh, for a tweakable block cipher mode, the goal is to establish indistinguishability from a tweakable random permutation pi, or you could view the tweakable random permutation pi as multiple independent random permutations, uh, just as you can view a tweakable block cipher as multiple block ciphers uh, indexed by the tweak. For beyond birthday security, uh, to establish such a result, we have to show that when the distinguisher D makes the Q queries uh, to either the TNT mode or the trickable random permutation, the difference uh, showed in this equation is small enough uh, at such a small level. Q to one divided uh, Q to one point five divided by two to n. We have to show such a result. To prove, uh, we use the resonant chi squared method. We prove a main intermediate result as this one. Technically, it means uh, conditional on l minus one early queries and responses. Uh, QL minus one uh, content uh, consisting of uh, t1, x1, y1 to t l minus one, x l minus one, y l minus one. The following two probabilities to obtain a certain new query and response from the TNT mode and from the trickable random permutation it, uh, is at such a small level. Uh, meaning that L divided by 2 to 2 n or Q divided by 2 to 2 n, they, they are of the same level. With such a small bound, 
by the relevant lemma, the co-lemma of the chi-squared method, the final bond would be the desired q to 1.5 divided by 2 to n. Here, we don't have the, uh, the, for the details, please see our paper. But we will brief uh, our analysis of this result. To reach the mention of, to reach the mention of bond, we analyze the we analyze each queries uh, in the system in turn. We will first consider the uh, case the else query is a forward query, meaning we query the TNT mode with TL, XL, and we consider probability to obtain a response YL. Uh, we will can further consider several cases. The first case is uh, the plaintex XL is not new, uh, means it appeared, uh, it has appeared in the past the L minus one queries. And also the response YL is not new, means uh, it uh, has appeared in the past the L minus one query responses. In this case, we could show the upper bound of the conditional probabilities uh, 4L divided by 2 to 2 n plus 1 divided by 2 to n minus L. We could show such an upper bound on the probability. And we could also show such a lower bound on the probability with 1 minus 2L divided by 2 n uh, times 1 divided by 2 n minus mu L. Well, where mu l is a parameter in the system. With this, we could, uh, in the ideal world, when you are interacting with the takeable random permutation, the probability is always 2n, the probability is always 1 divided by 2n minus mu l. So with this, we could have such a, an upper bound on, the, on this difference. It is two. It is eight L divided by two to two n. So this is the first case. The second case is uh, the query. The the query the plain text X L is mean is not new. It appeared in the past queries, but the obtained response is new, means uh, it it did not appear in the past responses. Uh, we use similar analysis, uh, use some combinatorix result, and we could obtain a similar, and we could obtain a similar bound on the difference. And then the third case means the plain text is new, but the response is not new, and we use similar analysis, obtain similar bounds, and finally the third case, uh, both the plain text XL and the response YL are new. And we again use the same analysis. See our please see our paper for the details of the analysis. Uh, for backward queries, uh, the analysis uh, is similar by symmetry and uh, give the same bound. So with this bound, we could have the we could have the bound on the different and uh, have the maximum bound. Now we could have a comparison with existing modes. As mentioned, TNT can be seen as the cascading LRW1 mode. And uh, of course, the most relevant reference is LRW2 and the cascading LRW2. So, so see the picture at the bottom of, of this page. LRW2 uses a single random permutation, pi1, but it uses an almost like XOR so universal hash function to hash the tweak. And use and take the digest of the tweak as something like a widening keys used at the two sides of the permutation. LRW1 can also be cascaded. Uh, see the right, uh, see the right part, right part of the figure at the bottom. Soon, but this needs more hashing calls. Almost like XOR universal hashing might uh, could be built from field multiplication multiplications. But this might be costly, uh, especially in the retweaking setting, setting. Because if you change the tweak, you have to uh, run the hash again. So this could be the disadvantage. Here is a comparison of TNT and the existing modes regarding security and costs. We refer to our paper for details. Uh, the most promising 
advantage of TNT is that there is no tweak schedule function, as we mentioned. So it is particularly efficient in retweak settings. We finally put forward our instance. You may think the situation as uh, we first extend the AES 128 from the original 10 runs to 18 runs and then divide it into three chunks of equal number of runs, means 666 six, six AES runs, and then we add the fix between the three chunks. So by this, crypt analysis and uh, implementations can be just based on previous works on AES. And we have made some preliminary analysis in the uh, open tweak setting or chosen tweak setting. We consider a differential attack, linear attack, impossible differential attacks, and so on. And we found no shortcut key recovery attack against the full TNT AES. We then evaluate the performance. Uh, it should be noted that here we consider the retweaking setting, and so we consider both plain text and tweaks as data. And we obtain this software comparison with the tweaky framework instances, Skinny and Deoxys, and, and so on. It can be seen TNT AES is competitive in the software performance setting. We also evaluate the hardware performance. Uh, for hardware performance, we estimate with minimizing area with the optimization target on the basis of the state of art result of gene. Uh, about the hardware performance, we have this comparison. From this table, it can be seen when the tweak has to be stored locally, the hardware performance of TNT AES is slightly inferior. But uh, on the other hand, if the tweak has does not if the tweak does not need to be stored locally, the hardware performance of TNT AES can be superior. Now the time to conclude. It is important to discuss potential applications of our of our new tweaking method. Uh, the question is. Cascaded LRW2 uses uh, almost the XOR universal hashing, and as we mentioned, it might be costly. But uh, on the but at the same time, such a hash function supports arbitrary length tweak, and it might be uh, promising. But TNT just supports NP tweak, and would this be bad? But we note, but but we should note. NP the tweak is already enough for many applications. Uh, for example, there are many beyond the birthday secure trackable block cipher based the max, the chaining via tweak mode, and the max of calculated L. And such max and for such max, uh, the NP tweak of trackable block cipher TNT will be already enough. And also, uh, it is also sufficient for the beyond birthday secure variable length domain extenders or something like this, uh, double length block cipher, and maybe also for some possible format preserving encryption schemes. And also, uh, it can be used to instantiate the CPACB and the OTR to obtain uh, beyond birthday secure variant of OCB and OTR. Uh, the performance and the security remains to be verified for the last use for the last application case. As a final note, we have proved the security lower bound of two to two n divided by three. And the triple security upper bound is two to n, so there remains a gap. This is an this is an open question. We refer to our paper for detailed discussion. It's over. Thank you for your attention.